final match of the uh, 2018 Breakout Con L5R Festival. My name is Victor. I'm here with uh, Jigoku Online expert Tony. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Tony. JD Sauce on Jigoku. So we've got uh, we've got Shane, who was the top, I believe he was the top ranking crab player in Swiss, and he's going to he's made it all the way through all the crane decks. He's played against. Uh, a bunch of a uh, bunch of opponents, and now he's made it to the final against Gunnar, who's playing a very interesting dragon paired with lion deck. Something that I never thought I would see at a top table. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the uh, decks very quickly. Uh, left and the right decks are just going to review them. And uh, for this round, we have 100 minutes going into the final, so uh, no going to time like last time. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be a knockdown drag out fight until the very end. So we see Gunnar's deck in the in the screen right now, and you see uh, his Lion Splash, three Vengeful Oathkeeper, ready for battle to uh, to counter all the bow effects that are in the game. And interestingly, one for Greater Glory, just like a random for Greater Glory. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> He's also got the two Mia Mystics over there, which is uh, not not as typical. Um, it would be very helpful against uh, against Shane in this matchup. So interesting deck. Yeah, like you mentioned, Shane is an attachment heavy deck. So we can go ahead and take a look at Shane's deck as well. See what we're talking about. So uh, you can see it's ornate friends, reprieves, spy glasses, talisman in the sun. So it's a very defensive, um, very defensive crab splashing unicorn. And you saw its effectiveness last round how it was able to grind out a win against uh, June's Crane Splashing Scorpion deck. Yeah. And so we're going to see how this one plays out. So uh, Gunnar starts out with a Niten Adept. And yeah, Gunnar starts out with a Niten Adept, one fade on it. Shane following it out with a Caillou Envoy, two Mia Satoshis. Wow, right off the bat. And that's great value because you're going to get that fate back and you're going to get to draw a card. So, great move on Shane's part. And this is going to make it tough because you're not bringing it out, Yokuni, with only five fate. So, this is a, ter this is a tough one for, uh, for Gunnar. <laughs> this the crap. is, uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is free attack, right? Oh, feast, feast or famine. Feast or famine, ouch. If, man, if I was Shane right now, if I had a way to break that province, I would just charge right in there. Are still now? Uh, we're still, we're still, no, 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 we're in a, excuse me, we're in pre-conflict, yeah. Yeah. Here it comes. You gotta assume he's got a bonsai now. I don't have gunners. Does Gunner Gunner's have conflict death. characters? Uh, yeah, Gunner has Vengeful Oathkeeper. He also has uh, yeah, Venge Vengeful Oathkeeper and Togashi Kazue, Tattooed Wanderer. Are the uh, conflict characters you play? So I think uh, in previous uh, previous matches we've seen Gunner's deck on stream. He has he has played out uh, Togashi Kazue as a character and not as an attachment, but. Looks like, yeah, thanks. So it looks like uh, Shane decided to go after the Feast or Famine, but Gunnar had a uh, Miramoto's Fury to bow it. Of course. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if Shane has another, uh, has another conflict character in his hand. Yeah, he's got three tattooed yeah. wanderers, so... So this is Gunnar actually just playing out a Vengeful Oathkeeper just by paying full price for it right. uh, for the counterattack. So there's been a lot of really tricky moves so far in this oh, game. he plays a... Yeah, he just, he just played it out, didn't uh, trigger it. Yeah, right. Interesting deck. You know, Vengeful Oathkeeper at first blush uh, seems like a weird include in a dragon deck, but hey, if you have a bunch of attachments... 
Um, you know, it goes from simply being like a just a two strength character that can't really break provinces on its own, on its own, to like yeah, attack with Vengeful Oathkeeper, play Dice Show, and it comes back to your it hand. comes back to your hand. Yeah. Use the stronghold. You could just surprise break a province from out of nowhere. And you can boost with your own box as well. Wow. Exactly. Good point. So, uh, gonna do a most likely a military conflict. We'll see where he go, who he goes after. My money would be on Borderlands Fender, I think. Yeah, I mean, because he's got two Satoshi. Yeah. Right? Now you gotta expect Shane to have a charge here, right? Oh, maybe. Defend the wall. Yeah, well, I mean, defending the wall, not going to do really all that much on this board oh, if Shane choice. wins. Shane wins a oh, conflict. What's he got? He's got a spyglass, watch commander, and that's all I caught. Yeah, so attachment heavy, uh, an attachment heavy hand, which may also be the reason why he just cho chose not to uh, play a bunch of guys. He wants to set up for next turn. But Kitsuki's method, so that's going to bump, uh, it's going to bump Gunners up to three political strength. And then with the box, it's going to make it four. And that breaks. Wow. Man, I thought when when Shane yeah. played that way of the crab turn one, I thought Gunner was like, <laughs> Gunner was on the ropes right away. But oh. now I see now I see the power of the <laughs> Ventral Oathkeeper. But Shane's got a Haruma Ambusher to answer with. Uh, covert triggers, not that necessary, though. Let's see if he actually has any buff of his own to take out the, to take out the uh, Feast or Famine province. So I saw a Reprieve, you got Ornate Fan in there too. Going for Earth. Feast of Famine. You take out that Yokuni too. Oh, he's and coming in. Wow, Gunner had everything, jeez. So this, I don't know if there's anything you can do here. Yeah, well, if Feast or Famine is, it, it, it forces your opponent to play so awkwardly because there's, because the thing about Feast or Famine is that it doesn't really care if the it's the character that uh, that's attacking that has a fade on them. He could just pull a, a fade off something else. This is interesting. Now he's yeah. uh, decided a bonsai against Yokuni. And then Ancestral Daisho in response. It's five. That's an interesting move. Six to seven. So yeah, Gunnar wins that one. Now, would you have bonsai in that scenario, just to win the no, ring? Oh, I wonder. I wonder why he did that. He doesn't have any keepers in his discard no, pile, he, right? I don't think so. That was uh, maybe. Move. Maybe he really wants the imperial favor. But after all that, Gunner ends the turn with one broken province on Shane's side, and he has uh, the imperial favor. So that was actually a really good turn for him, despite that. Uh, turn one way of the crab. And you mentioned this earlier, Victor. Those two ancestral dashes just come right back to your hand. Yeah. So that's that's phenomenal. Well done for Gunner. I mean that, that he turned it around, but now he's facing a pretty he's facing somewhat of a fate deficit. Yeah. Not not the worst compared to how we saw the uh, the opening salvo. So. And uh, we, we saw Shane. So Shane had showed the spyglass, showed the watch commander. <laughs> I think what you want to do now is you uh, you just pile on all the all those attachments onto uh, Mia Satoshi. However, like you like we mentioned during the the deck tech for Gunner, he's running three Lekos and two Mia Mystics. So there's a lot of attachment hate. Yeah. So if, if Shane's plan is to if Shane's plan is to gain a lot of economic advantage by way of attachments, I think he's going to be very disappointed. Now, it's an unfortunate flop for Shane because he met, he flipped over the Imperial Palace on the only broken province he has. Yeah, that's a tough break. <coughs> so Satoshi coming out, probably with two fate on it, I would imagine. There we go. Gunnar responds with a Niten Adept. We know he has at least two attachments in his hand. Is that another way of the crab? Ooh, I maybe. I, I mean, 
it, it might be way of the crab, but uh, Shane doesn't have any good crab uh, fodder to play. Like I don't, you don't want to sacrifice a crisis breaker or you don't want to play either of those just to play way of the crab on it. Yeah, but I gotta assume that when he draws, he's gonna he's gonna at least be able to pick up another right. one of his six uh, conflict characters. Yes. Well, five now, I guess. So crisis breaker, but that's gonna make Shane broke. Gunner passed first with four fate. Nice. So what do you do on the dial? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he might go with that dishonor strategy again. Yeah. That big honor pressure. Well, like you said, he had a watch commander, right? Yeah. I was gonna say two, but Shane. Yeah. Big boy going for the just one. So we'll, we'll see if he actually ends up if Gunnar drew a uh, let go. Excuse me. So he's he's gonna try to he's, he might I mean this strategy here now is he's got watch command he's got reprieve he's got fans and he's got that talisman so right now you're pretty much gonna have to see how to bait out those let goes yeah. because you know he has them you know they're gonna be in hand there's three copies in Gunner's deck so Shane's got to be careful in how he attaches his items so let's see how this plays out. Well, I would want to dump a bunch of cards from my hand because I want to find that restoration of balance. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And that's probably another reason why he, he only drew one card that turn because he's probably going to go fishing. He's going to probably go fishing for that restoration of balance. That's a good point, Victor. Yeah. Uh, something that, you know, any anybody who's played against Dragon is weary of doing, drawing too many cards Yeah. before you find that restoration. It, it, it's the two things you want to find. You want to find the Feaster Fan, yeah. you want to find the Restoration Buster. After that, it's fine. Uh, it's painful. Uh, I'm a Scorpion main, so even me, I'm yeah. drawing two cards max, and um, yeah, it makes it tougher. Okay, so so here we got a uh, military. Military Void. Hits shameful. the Shameful. Ouch. Let's see what happens here. So that's one military to start with. So this, is, this is interesting because he could have got two conflicts out of Crisis Breaker, but he's going to choose not to. Assuming he had a conflict character in his hand. But he might go, yeah, he's going to go with the Mia Satoshi. Yeah, to honor it. however, yeah, I think it's just more valuable to get the honor onto Satoshi. This will be a de defensive yeah. play, yeah. No, no, that's Don't. not how it works. <laughs> He's hoof flipping Wrong eventually. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's uh, that puts uh, Satoshi at four strength and then Mendicant at zero. So, Gunner's playing a charge. Beauty. Another charge. Tugashi Akuni. And depending on what ability he copies, that might even uh, protect him on. Yeah, I could yeah, I could see uh, I time. could see to get copying the Niten adept and then playing something. Oh here uh, comes the policy debate. Yeah, policy debate Four to zero. Nobody nobody falls for the bluff this time. So there you go, you see the two let goes, cloud the mind. Two cloud the mines. Yeah, I, I would strip let go. Oh no, no he's taking the Kazooie. Out. There you go. He's got to assassinate there. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that was probably his plan. Charge into Kazooie and then use it. So that was a well-timed policy debate by... Uh, yeah, uh, policy debate was well-timed on Gunner's side. So Shane's at this point just trying to memorize the cards because there's quite a few, but it's going to give him some trouble. Well, good news is Assassinate's not doing anything on, on this board, and uh, now he knows to play around Tattooed Wanderer. Joe from Cincinnati saying, charging Yukuni two turns in a row, not too bad, and I uh, have to agree. Pretty good flop. So that's he's copying our, the yeah. Nintendo Depth's ability there, it looks like he's indicated. Yep. Responding with a ornate fan, knowing full well that Gunner has let go. But <laughs> I think he's just playing this to bait out the let go because he's yeah. not doing anything. In yeah, this I think conflict. that's it. I think it has. I think that's what it's got to be because he's gonna 
he's going to try to get that spyglass out to help out draw. Right. And really put on that honor pressure. So. But that that seems like an obvious bait. Like, if I was Gunner, like... <laughs> nope, he's going to no, go he for it. He's going to take it. Take it. Okay. Oh, you know why he did that? My bad. Because he did that because um, he needed to protect uh, Satoshi from getting bowed by the Niten Adaptability. That too, yeah. Yeah, but so this is him triggering the Satoshi. We saw one keeper there, and a Satoshi comes out. So we know he's got a talisman. At this point, like, what are his yeah. other provinces? Does he want to switch one of them? So uh, Shane's provinces are manicure garden defend the wall meditations on the Dow, shameful display and rally to the cause rally to the cause probably is going to be on his stronghold so no no real advantage playing at this yeah. point i mean so shameful display breaks I have a feeling this is not going to be a long game. <laughs> but that, that's usually how it is, right? Like, I mean, Dragon, especially I guess this Lion Dragon version is designed to be a lot more blitzy, I think. Um, and, you know, remember, there's one copy of For Greater Glory in Gunner's, Gunner's deck as well. But I guess he didn't draw it. Otherwise, I think he would have popped it off right now. That would be a nut draw. <laughs> All right, Mendicant, let's get into that conflict. Yeah, Turkzor says peaking dynasty cards forbidden by the rules. I'm not, I don't think that was intentional, but nevertheless, Judge Travis went over and talked to Shane about it, making sure that, hey, if you're going to look at your province cards, you're going to have to make sure that you cannot see the dynasty card at all. Good catch there by Turkzor on the chat. Looks like the Crisis Breaker heading in with a water conflict. Likely to just ready that Mia Satoshi afterwards. So right now, he just looked like he's, he just discarded a watch commander. Uh, where are we at? We're water at, water military? Yeah, the only Price piece breaker. I wasn't too sure about was that, yeah, watch commander got discarded there. Oh, and he, he did hit the restoration, okay. I mean, Shane's down oh, two provinces. Means, right? yeah. Shane's down two provinces, but at least now he knows where the restoration is. Now, here's the thing: like that, would you? I mean, I guess we gotta look at his hand again. But discarding the watch commander when you're going for the uh, dishonor strategy—that—that's interesting. But no, well, I—I I don't think it was a dishonor strategy. I think it was simply just not Honor wanting pressure. to get yeah. not wanting to get hit by restoration yeah. balance. That's why he did one. Fair enough. Well, we we can see his hand now as a talisman. Yeah, he's got the reprieve, the spyglass, and the and the way of the crab. So yeah, maybe maybe the watch commander was the was the right choice. The the adept is it defending or not? Can't tell right now. Okay. Yeah, he is. That's why the ancestral uh, okay. dice shows down. I, I stepped away for a second, so I wasn't able to tell. But I'm gonna notice. Here. So that's four, four strength. Oh, it's it's yeah. The conflict's over. I think conflict's he just uh, Shane's like can't break this and um, let it go. Did uh, I guess Gunner paid full price for that bookkeeper? Okay, Vengeful Oathkeeper doing a political air conflict against meditations. I think was the promise that got revealed. 
Yeah. I need to start one for each. One for each? Thank you. Okay, with no defenders. It's got Kitsuki technique on him. Yeah, Kitsuki's method. Method. Three uh, skill. And, and it breaks. Oh, with a box, he broke it? Yeah. Okay. So that's three provinces done by Shane. Jeez. You know, it's weird. Unlike unlike the first game, where, sorry, the previous game, where we saw Shurisuki in a bunch of holdings, and he was able to get a bunch of card advantage. Like, Gunner's been able to. Maybe he was watching the game. I don't know. But he was able to. Uh, I think he, he, he figured that he definitely has to go a lot faster than Shane if he wants to keep him off balance. Turksor asks about the clan breakdown in the top eight. Uh, it turned out that every clan was represented with the exception of Unicorn. So it was uh, two, two cranes, two phoenixes, right? Yeah. Yeah. and then everything else was represented at least once. So yeah, Lono888 says uh, three provinces versus grabbing two turns. That is impressive for sure. sure. Yes. Surprising too, actually. Well done. Ah, oh. That's bad news. Now, yeah, that's a tough flop. Um, I, so, uh, Travis, can you go and tell Shane to discard the Imperial Palace? Yeah. Yeah, okay, no, he they got it. it. He got it. They got it. <clears throat> they caught it. Okay. But it doesn't matter. Uh, no tons of script. Well, uh, I got a scorpion player on the on the mic with me too. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Yeah, you know what? Scorpions are underrepresented here. Overall, you know, turnout yeah. wasn't as big as um, you know some of the cotes. I think not having it being announced as a cote probably hurt that. Um, yeah, but yeah, definitely underrepresented. There are a lot of crabs and a lot of uh, phoenix, uh, from what I understood. But we'll have the. I believe we are submitting the breakdown to um, Pavilion, so yeah, you guys will see the results. Yeah, Joe, Joe from Cincinnati uh, talks about the face down on Shameful if you do one face up. Yep, Travis is going to go fix the situation now. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah, when you... What's that? It can matter. It can matter because... Yeah. You might as well fix it, right? Might as well... I mean, this is the finals. Turk Sword asked us we will. It, Turk Sword asked us we will visit Europe sometime. Uh, well, you know what? Visit the Patreon page, or maybe we can yeah, uh, get yeah. some funding to Let's, uh, let's work something out. Just come to our Patreon page. These we'll guys, see if we can add a reward tier or something. Yeah. So Victor, Victor, and Travis, these guys here, they're doing a great job, and this is this is out of their pockets. So I mean. Great work on their part, but if you got, <laughs> hey, head over to Patreon and see what we can. We'll see what we can do. So Samiko with favor, yeah, good point. What would you have done? Would you have taken her instead? Because I would be afraid of that way of the crab. What are you gonna do, Samiko too? But I don't know. I think against crab, you always got to be weary of that. That you know, that way of the crab there. I can't believe they had noticed the honor took from a crab player that got pushed the other player so, so long and ended up discarding it. So how much honor should they have? Oh. Uh, they, yeah, at this, this point it's been so yeah. far, so much to track. <clears throat> Obviously, you can see the signs of fatigue from both players. Like when they start, people start playing fast and um, especially when, when Shane's been backed into a corner like he is, right? Like sometimes you miss stuff. Hey, did we see that second let go yet or no? No, I think... So he's, I don't think uh, Shane, like this is now Shane only playing attachments for the first time after the Ornate fan. And he knows there's two let goes in Gunner's hand, so. Well, no, Gunner used one, unless he drew another. No, th that's yeah. what I mean. He knew there were two let goes. He baited out one with the Ornate fan. Yes. And now he's just like, I need to play two spy glasses to make sure I can at least draw one card this turn. Yeah. So. The one thing to note is Shane hates Dragon. Like it's the one matchup that he hates the most. <laughs> so. 
in his head, he is just cursing up a storm right now. Just but he this whole plays match. Dragon. This is, I feel like this is just desserts for Shane. He hasn't played Dragon that much. Okay. He's a crap guy mostly. Right. Okay, so yeah, uh, military earth conflict with Crisis Breaker with the Spyglass, draws a card. Draws a charge. Not helpful in this case. No. So before the match, Shane actually came up to me and was like, Karata District, Karata District. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm well, sure he's still trying to draw for it with the Mia Satoshi. Yeah. I think he's waiting. Like, that's why he's waiting, right? Yeah. He wants he, to yeah, let surprise, Gunnar yeah. commit and then try to get it. So at this point, all three Satoshis are gone. I don't know if he's milled the Imperial Storehouse lap yet. The Imperial Palace is gone, so it's very likely that the next Satoshi uh, uh, he has a really good will, chance. will hit the Karada District. Yeah. yeah, so let's see what happens. Both players had a chance to sit down for about five minutes and review each other's uh, decks, so yeah. Gunnar knows what's happening on, on the other end too. So so may maybe maybe a Satoshi actually will salvage this situation, but it might be a little bit too little too late. So. The District? What did I say? Satoshi. Sat sorry. Yeah, Sat you're right. Satoshi, Satoshi will district. salvage yeah, yeah, yeah. it with yeah. a district. Yeah. Right. Okay, so he wins the Earth Ring. Uh, actually, I'm surprised that Gunner let him win the Earth Ring. Let's see if he actually remembers to trigger the Keepers, though. Oh, makes him discard it. Okay. Let's see it. No. No, no. Shane forgot. Shane. Well, now let's see if Gunner no. is a. Oh. He didn't, he didn't do anything yet. Yeah, let's see if Gunner is a nice enough guy to, uh, if he does know. remember. I don't know. This is the finals. I mean, I know. we're all nice players here, but I don't think you'd remind your guy in the finals. All right, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, Vengeful Oathkeeper. That's why. <laughs> this is Vengeful Oathkeeper. Oh, my God. So, to this, what did we learn this weekend? That Cautious Scout is good and Vengeful Oathkeeper is good. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Missed keeper. That's right. Joe from Cincinnati just mentioned. Yeah, yeah we, now, uh, we were counting down, but he he didn't get it. And look at this. Gunnar goes political against Rally for the Cause just to, because uh, I think he knew the Rally. For, uh, he must have known Rally for the Cause was a stronghold because he got to review the deck list beforehand, and he he's he's looking at Rally for the Cause. And he's like, well, I mean, that's there's only one province who would make sense under so. Just remember He's, what I said about Shane cursing in his yeah, mind right now. Right. He's, I'm sure, on tilt. Yeah. So the nice thing is, actually, no, he still got that let go. Oh, now he, admit, now he catches it. Yeah. Now, oh, and he lets him. See? Wow. We're Canadians, right? Yeah, nice guy. <laughs> nice guy, Gunner, man. Wow. Crazy. Okay. Gunner's I mean, pretty far I mean, ahead. technically, this fall, like, uh, as far as the tournament rules go, this falls under missed opportunities, and... If you, if you have the consent of your opponent, you can let it happen. But, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, well, it's two because he has favor, right? So he's going to defend with one keeper. That's ambitious. Uh, he, d he decided not to switch, I guess. Uh, defends with one keeper. Joe from Cincinnati says, is his opponent seriously going to allow that? Well, I mean, that's pretty good sportsmanship if so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you really want to, like, Gunnar is in such a commanding lead right now. Like, I just, I don't know. Just let him, let him have this Pyrrhic victory, you know? Um, yeah, so. Okay. So, just one defender. I guess he's just extremely confident that uh, just the one Oathkeeper is not going to break anything. But he does win the province. And so he's going to remove the uh, honor token from Satoshi. All right. So now Satoshi, <coughs> sorry. So now uh, Shane, I mean, he can't, he can't declare, uh, he can't declare a uh, fight here. Maybe maybe water to maybe chump attack with the with the keeper in a shit with the yeah. water ring to uh, bow the Niten adept. Like at least you're gonna get him to commit with the Niten adept, right? I think that's actually the best plan. <coughs> this is gonna be mm. tough. Shane's.
Gunner felt guilty. <laughs> so for those of you that can't see the chat, yeah, you know, um, v- yeah, the Travis is talking about. Uh, yeah, so I think I think a chump attack is the right move here, with uh, with the watering. Unless I'm missing something. Oh, he's gonna attack with a heat of guardian too. He just gotta go so he can't yeah. go solo, so maybe. Yep. And that's uh Oh there let go. go. There's the second one. We might have a third one hiding in so his hand. So this might somewhere. be beneficial. Yeah. Because when Gun assuming Gunner doesn't have a third let go, yeah. When he tries to swing back on this next conflict, right. Shane's gonna be able to talisman him out into well, a crappy province. But he just played a tattooed wanderer on his uh and I don't think I think Shane Over. just passed his conflict. So yeah. this is the second conflict. Military. Here it comes. He's gonna. I think he's just gonna covert Hita Guardian. Can you bring up Hita Guardian quickly? Is he gonna go all in? I just want to see if uh, Hita Guardian has to be participating. So Rudo yeah. saying okay. if he, if, uh, if uh, Gunner doesn't win on the next attack, prepare, prepare for a, for comeback. a comeback from okay, Shane. Well, so we'll see. Let's see. <laughs> so we know he's got that. Um, the talisman in his hand, so if he needs so, it. So how many mil- people are being declared right now? Did you see? Sorry? How many? How, is he declaring with all? Yeah, I, I think he declared with all, all of right? them. So military, it looks like two, one, uh, five, seven, seven. Seven military right now. And, oh, they're slightly off camera. And it's two for defense to start with, but uh, Hita Guardian can pump plus four. I just, just talked about it. At six right now. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So the initiate has honored himself. Yep. Another so that pumps two. it up by two. And so uh, that is a no. The uh, crab stronghold is plus three. It's strength, a watch right? commander. That's what he plays. Uh, watch is commander. It? Yep. It looks like a watch commander. So that's uh, another strength. And then so uh, in order for Gunnar to win, he needs to. Plus seven, I think, right? Because the uh, crab stronghold's three strength, I believe. Is that his version of a tap? Uh, for who? Sorry. Uh, that's Shane's version of a tap. Not right. <laughs> I, I guess so. I don't. I can't tell if he actually did it. Do you want to? Okay. It matters for us, but yeah. Okay. So we're we're not. I can't tell if he actually used his stronghold there. Um, we'll see if he, so assuming he did, that would bring it up to six. Well, I mean, wouldn't you use the, the Heat of Guardian's no. ability first? Not six, no. just two, right? Okay. Yeah. You're right, sorry, I, I, the Watch Commander, I assume it was a character. <laughs> yeah. Rudo says he's baiting a third let go setup for Talisman. Yeah, maybe. That would be a pretty sweet play if that was the case. Why isn't he boosting? With the Hita Guardian? You know, he may want to. Mm, yeah, because like the Hita Guardian is not going to. The, the Hita Guardian is uh, not going to participate in their conflict, probably. So and you might as well use it if you're going to use it. Ah, he's waiting to see who the adept bows. Ah, yeah. yes, smart. Oh no, but no matter what, you can't bow the other, uh, the initiate because mm-hmm. he's holding an attachment. So I think it's auto boost at this point. But hey, maybe it's something I don't see. Oh well, this uh, is probably why because he wanted to make sure to bring in the crisis breaker. There so you go. Triggers Good, crisis nice. breaker brings it in. Uh, so that's minus. Sorry, yeah, plus three. My bad. She's at five now. Five strength. Price so no plus longer a, breaking. Plus a two oh, strength, yeah. I, I Sh- stronghold that. unused. No, not yet. Now he's using the Heat of Guardian's ability. And he's boosting the keeper. And up to nine we are. 
They hadn't used his front. No, he to Guardian gets two each. He's up to four, like nine. Yeah, now he's at eleven because yeah, the. Uh, he's at he's at eleven now. So, he, so two plus three five plus four for the heated guardian. So nine, and then he used the stronghold ten eleven. Oh, he's holding right there. Yeah, yeah. So he's at eleven, not ten. I know. It, sometimes when you click it too fast, it doesn't update. Yeah. I will, I will uh, I'll give Shane credit. I mean, maybe maybe what Rudo says is gonna come true. Like if he if he doesn't lose the game this turn. I think everybody's everybody's uh, rooting for for Shane right now to, to make and, a comeback. And the thing is, right? Like uh, Shane also has the no wait. He already did. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Passed. Two conflicts. Now he's gonna swing back. No, that was the second conflict. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because Shane he is passed. the first player, and Gunner's right. already done two conflicts. But he is going to get the uh, Imperial, Imperial favor, favor this time. Which is timely, because look, he has uh, Agasha Samiko sitting in the, yeah. the dynasty of Gunnar, so. He's just trying to decide if he wants it on military or political. Oh. And now Gunnar is going to be losing that knee 10 adept. Still has an honored uh, Coverti Tagashi initiate. So the. Um, I guess the nice part about this is that, for, for Gunner that is, is Shane's right. going to lose one of those iron mines no matter what. Right. So, only, only a bit of a saving grace to a pretty bad round for Gunner. Well done by Shane though, eh? Mm -hmm. what, a, what a comeback. He's going to make this competitive. He's not going down without a fight. Oh, way of the crap. Oh, no. Wow. There you go. I mean, whatever whatever he loses, yeah, whatever whatever Gunner loses, um, it's actually pretty significant. It's a pretty no, big thing. They're arguing investment. about Iron Mind saving his Heat of Guardian. Oh, no, you crap. can't. You it's, can't. A, it's a clear cut yeah. rule. Yeah. That, so that, that, event, right? It's a yeah, cost. It's going to die. Yeah, it's a so cost. Maybe go help them save some time, or you're going to let them talk it out. Okay. So Gunner's informing him that, yeah, that thing's going to go through. Yeah, I think what is just a misunderstanding yeah. of the rules on Shane's part. Yep. They're going to, so, yeah, Travis is going over now and he's going to clarify. Uh, it is a cost, so you cannot prevent it. Or if you do prevent it, you don't get to use the effect. Yeah, so he can prevent it. But yeah. That would have just been a wasted card and a wasted uh, fate. So. Yeah. Who did he sacrifice? He's trying to sacrifice the Heat of Guardian. Okay. Uh, so he does play it. Okay. And what does he sacrifice? I mean, he needs to sacrifice first before before Gunner makes the decision, right? Well, hold on. Uh, Travis isn't over there yet. Yeah, he's over oh, there. Oh, he's over there. Okay. So Victor's going to head over there now um, because this should be stopped, but just bear with us here. Yeah, so a lot of the times with, you know, <laughs> Joe from Cincinnati says, don't let this happen in the final. Yeah, and Hard Hot Ham Hops is uh, agreeing, hey, you can't save any character. Yeah, we know. On our side, we're just trying to inform them here. Um, what you guys don't see is we got like 20 tables of X-Wing players between us, and uh, you got to like sprint down there, so... Uh, these guys are doing their best. Mm -hmm. 
So that would be Victor's hand that you just saw, informing them that, hey, that guy's got to die. And Shane complies. So there you go. All is good. All is well again with Rokugan. So one thing, I'm sure anybody that's been to a, um, a Kote uh, will understand is that, look, like, <laughs> Joe from Cincinnati says clear fate. Um, I guess I'll inform him when he gets back because I'm the only one manning the desk. Um, <clears throat> one thing to remember, you know, anytime you're attending these Kotes, you're going nonstop, no lunch, nothing, um, two days back to back. And, uh, you know, it, it's, a bit, it's a bit tough on the body. Like, uh, sometimes you just... Fatigue kicks in, and uh, you forget simple things um, that you normally would remember. So, wow! So, anybody that's just joining in now, Shane started with a started in a pretty big hole. A um, couple of uh, vengeful oath keepers just came into play and really, really surprised them. That die show combined with it to break some provinces, um, but has now, ever since winning that Earth Ring, uh, really, really turned it around. So uh, we're seeing a bit of a comeback here. Let's see, let's see how far he can carry this. Um, Gunner just flopped a. What was it? It's the uh, three, secluded three. temple. Yes. Or, the, or sorry, the, the Doom Shigenja. He's, he's got the Doom Shigenja, which is great value. But at this point, he, he's probably looking for for more. Um, Let's see what he's got in his hand. Uh, that'll, that'll help us a lot. <laughs> Turk Zord saying, being focused for 12 rounds in Kote is one of, the, one of the top players' skills, and I have to agree. <laughs> Lambert Shaspi saying, secluded. Yeah, secluded, nice. secluded temple, not a, again, not a, like a common card in, uh, in a lot of the more common dragon decks I would say yeah he's actually running two of them so yeah it's part of his overall strategy so we see the four here, four to yeah, three four to three yeah I mean Shane now needs a yeah Shane needs a lot more uh, a lot more cards in hand now So this is like almost a reversal yeah. here. J Board status. Yeah, Jag, Jag Dex is talking about um, should he have lost the recruitment crisis breaker. There was two iron mines in play, and so one of them was used to save the crisis breaker. There's the cloud, the mind. Yeah. I believe he has two from that first um, policy debate that we saw. Yeah. Yeah. So nobody, nobody is gonna stay alive. That Karata district's filing up. But, oh uh, man! <laughs> it's but it's on a broken. Yeah. Well, I mean, if Shane draw drew into a rebuild, that's not that big of a deal. Right. And in, in fact, actually, he can get double duty out of it if he um, uses Karata district and then rebuilds it because it's a new instance of Karata district gets to use it again. Yeah, that's a good point. So military water with uh, Doom Shigenja at the stronghold again. You guys take a slip, sir? A charge. Charging. Oh, Boom. big Casada. It's the big man. Big queso. So that's gonna that's gonna prevent the first uh Yeah, cause cause action hasn't been played yet this conflict. Does he have a reprieve in his hand? Uh, I don't see one. No. Looks like it. maybe. Saw a skirmisher. Okay. Winnie Fan. I don't think there's a reprieve. He's got a bonsai. So, Gunner's going to lay that one down. So, Kasada's ability is up and running now, preventing the first action from being played. And here's a sneaky thing from most crab players. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying Shane's doing this on purpose, but a lot of crab players will shift Kasada off to the side. And, <laughs> hey, man, you're, if you forget about it, it's your fault. And, uh, yeah. you know, I've, I've fallen in for that a few times. Um, oh, there's the reprieve right there. Um, so, it looks like Kasada will be staying. Oh, Cloud the Mind. There's nice. the second one. Okay, now you don't have to remember the... Now you don't got to remember <laughs> it. You, so don't... you can leave him all there if you want. <laughs> we don't need to worry about him no more. So would you have gone Crisis Breaker into that and, you know, got double usage out of him? Or? 
Uh, yeah, the problem with the crisis break so it was obviously a chump attack on Gunner's side, but like the crisis breaker, if you spent the crisis breaker to defend, I guess if you used the box as well, then you could win the conflict. But the crisis breaker by itself wouldn't have won the conflict. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and then I think I would have charged, charge, attack, a charge. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll actually see now how Gunner plays around the Karata district, because that's going to be awkward. Yeah, but for Shane, the, the tide's gonna the tide's gonna turn if he, yeah. if he doesn't swing. Now, so but see, the thing about uh, he's go. actually the thing about not committing Crisis Breaker is now he gets to attack with it. I guess he's he's going to be coverting the Niten Adept. But he, if he didn't, he'd have an attachment on the Crisis Breaker, so Niten Adept couldn't bow it. Yeah, good point. So he's gonna figure out where he wants to go. Probably Samiko, I think. Oh no, go after Feast or Famine. Yeah, you don't got any fade on right yeah, now. Yeah, I think this is the it's the the time is right. <laughs> you kind of get rid of that favorable There's ground no, as well. no better time yeah. to get rid of Feast or Famine. No, nope. no. He, he, he wants to get rid of that Ruby Champion. Is that who she is? Yeah. Ruby did you did you play the old F5R? I did, briefly. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was way younger back then, so I didn't have to quite the money to, to buy yeah. all the cards, but my cousin was very great, gratefully, uh, I was very grateful that he, he let me use his cards, and I actually started with the Unicorn. But any oh, chance yeah? I got, I took well, a Well, Unicorn deck. was good in the old days, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, New Bruto says... Feast of Famine is free. We agree with you 100%. So Sides to go for Rally for the Cause. Yeah, so now he's hit, he's hit a Rally, and that's that really that's really not the thing that he wanted to see. Because, yeah. well, now, now Skirmisher is gone, and that Berserker is considered a 1. Um, it's uh, political now. Let's see if he kind of just favorable grounds that Satoshi in. Kind of sucks, because technically you probably could have got two uses out of the uh, Spyglass, but now it might just be 1, so... Let's see what he does. I mean, he, he's still winning the conflict, and that's the... I guess that's one consolation. Looks like he's got a fan in his hand. Yeah, he's going to use a favorable ground to move the knee 10 a bit, adapt into the conflict. So it's now 3-1. to one. Uh, sorry, I, I, he, you know has what? Two, he has two. He has it's a political two. favorite. Yeah, right, yeah, my it's bad. right off to the corner there. Yep. Good, call, good, good eye. So you said Shane had a fan in hand? Oh, oh should have got that out earlier. Now, what do you do when you're Shane right now? You, you bid five? You prevent it? Or, or you kind of push the honor? Oh. No, nobody, uh, nobody bits any higher than one. So Gunner is going to have perfect information on his opponent's there? hand. Sorry guys, just double checking. I think we put the list up earlier and it may not have had the cards. It is on his deck list. So there we see the second fan. <laughs> Looks like he's playing a court games, forcing Shane to dishonor his own guy. Comes Luchi Wayfinder. It's not even gonna look at the province. And the Nitin Adept quickly bows it. So Shane trying to find a way to get that extra one. Um, gonna Karata? He's gonna Karata district it. 
And I mean, if he had played that a bit earlier, it might have, uh, might have prevented the immediate bow. But hey, like I said, fatigue kicks in. So here we see five to one now. Sorry, six to one. Nope, you're right, five to one. So this is a break. No, it is six to one. The flavor still. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, he's just on it, sorry. There you go, favorable grounds gets popped. Vengeful, no. <laughs> I always mess this one up, don't I? It's the Vanguard Warrior. He looks angry. I always consider he's vengeful, but yeah, he, he's just a vanguard warrior. Okay, so pump it up. So it's going to be six and two. Oh, not anymore. That's a break and uh, activating the earth ring, I think. Okay. Is it a break? Was it a break? Should be. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two. Oh, he put a second fan on. I didn't see that. Okay. There you go. No break, got the ring, ends up discarding an assassinate. Might come in handy here. So if you were, uh, if you were Shane, would you have uh, assassinated that, that keeper? Nah, because uh, the Earth Ring would have triggered it. Right. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, man, F Feast or Famine is... Okay, it does get broken? Yes. Maybe he just... Maybe he wants to avoid Feast or Famine, that but I undefended. feel like... That's undefended. Did he lose an honor for it? Uh, make sure Gunner lost an honor for undefended. Uh, is this for the Crisis Breaker? No, he attacked Rally for the cause. Timely rebuild from Shane. Yeah, for Karata. <laughs> for Karata. So you wisely decided to switch that to um, an unbroken province. Otherwise, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. I don't think it matters at this point. I'm pretty sure you'd be using it, but yeah. Who knows? Now, would you? Have, yeah, I guess you have to play that. Otherwise, I, I guess you could have saved the Karata district, dropped another attachment off. Any, but anything else that he's gonna put down, but. Faith for Shane. <sighs> so Shane's right now. He's deciding who to save. It's either gonna be. I mean, I think it. It'd have to be the Satoshi, no? I don't know. We'll see. No? No? He's going to save Kasada, I believe. Cloud the Mind of Kasada? Yeah. Is this pure pure military strength? Is I that think why? so. I okay. think that's what it's going to come down to. That's strange because Satoshi had like equal strength on... Yeah. Not equal, but he, he was pretty close on the um, political side and he could have drawn a card, but... You can still also draw another Wait. Uh, Kasada in his dynasty. Hold on a second. Okay. So Shane rebuilt the Karate Circuit and then discarded? No, no, no. He rebuilt the uh, Iron Mine. Ah, okay. All right. Hmm. Oh, no. interesting flop. Look at that. He's got all the fate in the world and really can't use it. So now they're trying to figure out how much honor they have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is going to be interesting. So I, I guess I see his point. Shane's thinking, hey, Crisis Breaker's got, what, four on him, on solo? Four political strength. And, um, you know, he, he wants some military, so that's probably why he took Kasada. Um, then he gained seven? Still, hard pressed to give up, give up the Miyazatoshi. Oh, but there you go. Well worth it. Okay. He actually flopped the uh, Hida Kasada, so he'll that, be staying. That, yeah, I was saying that last round. That might be why he keeps him, because he knew he yeah. two more to... Tra I see. Travis had that bang on, so good call. Yeah, 
Gunnar's got a lot of money, though. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think he was just indicating that he was paying for it, yeah. So another crisis breaker for Shane. Well, the one good thing about crisis breaker is that it, it, at least it discourages the Trump military attack from the opponent. Me and Mystic. I agree. I agree. Heat of Guardian. Interesting. Two fate on the Mia Mystic, so that thing's not, he's not going to use it. Or will he? It doesn't matter. He has so much fate. Yeah. Eh. I would have saved it for a next turn. For a, uh, for another turn. So they're going to bids. Gunner, so much money. Now remember, he has, uh, he has like, the Gunner has quite a few uh, Ooh, conflict five characters. to one. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. G Gunner has. This is going to be interesting, guys. Ooh. And, and he's got first go. Sh right? Shane has first go, Shane yeah. Shane has first go. So this is going to be interesting. I'm wondering, you know, in Gunner's mind right now, because, you know, we're talking about this from a third, you know, we're sitting back. Right. Yeah. We're able to be logical about this. But I'm wondering with Gunner, you uh -huh. know, with the way the tables have turned, I I'm wondering if he's like, he regrets letting, go, letting those two keepers. Uh, in uh, because it's really coming back to bite him in the butt. Um, so he must be feeling the frustration right now. I, I'd yeah. anticipate at least. It, it would feel bad if, if Shane ended up winning because it, it just felt like he's been missing so many triggers. But it's been a long day. Uh, he was here yesterday, of course. He wanted to play Netrunner, but uh, he, he ended up making it to the final, so he wasn't able to play in uh, Netrunner. And I would say between L5R and Netrunner. I mean, he's he's doing a lot of community organizing. Shane is for, for Netrunner around Toronto, but... Uh, he has an L5R net as well. And he's playing the sorry, I meant, I meant to say L5R, yeah, not yeah. Netrunner. Community, community organized for L5R. I mean, but he runs the... The Rhino stuff, too, Netrunner yeah. So, military conflict, most likely. Don't... Okay, yeah, military earth, get those yeah, keepers back. Bring the keepers back in. Yeah, I mean, you got to go for the hidden one. You can't go after Feast of Famine now. <laughs> pull, pull his, pull As everybody in the chat's been saying, yeah. should have went for Feast. Yeah. But political, political. Oh, I see why he's going political. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, he's so got the heated gardens. Yeah, he's got Yeah, shameful display, though. Uh, actually, shameful display is not that, not that important in this... Because that's, what, zero glory on the Jim Shigenja, one glory on the Crisis Breaker. So that's only a one-point uh, swing. Uh, still enough to break, though. Oh, no, wait. Nope, sorry. The thing's... Policy debating. No, wow. This is a 4-3 four, four, pol policy debate. This is going to be interesting. Well, I mean, he's... Gunner only has five honor, so... It's maybe... So, yeah, I mean, my point is, if you're Gunner... Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. You, okay. Are you going to go for three? <laughs> mm, maybe. Why not? Uh, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you just end up losing by honor. Right? What did he do? Two oh, to four? Two to oh, okay. four. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Look at all those attachments. Oh. oh, he's got a second assassinate. Not that it helps. Well, it sort of helps. Because eh. that Heat of Guardian is going to pick a good yeah. decent Yeah, he, he also just gained the honor off yeah. the uh, the so policy debate anyway. So it's oh, he's got for greater him. glory. Not that it'd be helpful now. You'd think with for, you know, with the for greater glory, eh, uh, doesn't matter. No. I guess he's got to okay. defend. Yeah. <laughs> What do you take? That let go, right? Yeah, there you go. That's the last let go. So Shane can breathe a sigh of relief. He's going to be able to play all well, the attachments he wants. The, there's still the Mia Mystic in play, though. Oh, yes, that's right. <laughs> Popping it for two. I forgot yeah. already. I almost never see Mia the Mystics. Mia Mystic, yep. uh, to be honest. So Maybe maybe Gunner's meta is like all attachments. Maybe it's like a dragon mirrors, endless dragon mirrors <laughs> in the meta. He's like, the only thing worse than a dragon is another dragon. Pathfinder <laughs> Blaze, no! <laughs> so interesting. So Sh Shane, Shane won that? I think so. But it didn't uh, break, no, right? Oh, Mirror Motors. Yeah, right, that's, sorry. That's a bit quick. I think that was it. That was it. That was My bad, yeah. So that was... Because the Miramoto's Fury is the uh, crisis break. Gunner needed that because, man, if those keepers came back again, oh, there's the, no way the, he's gonna... the chump attack. 
<laughs> water. Oh, to stand the stand the doom I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what do you do? You can't defend with the heated guardian solo because that would be a little silly. But if you defend with the Casada, can't he can't he pump the heated guardian? With he can't the... pump himself. Oh really? He's gotta pump somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could heal yeah. a guardian and, and just um, use your stronghold. Right. That might hold him off. I mean, you do have a talisman, so you can, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's political, yeah. He does have favor, right? He does have favor, yeah. He doesn't even need the pump. He just needs to defend with the heal guardian. Yep. And swing back with uh, Kisada. Uh, Joe from Cincinnati, yes, uh, Hidikasada is cloud of minded. Oh! What's it happen? No defense. Okay, just make sure that uh, Shane loses an honor for that. Right? I didn't see it, did you? No, I don't think he, he lost an honor for it. He is at 10 still, yes. Yep. So Travis is going to. Very I, I feel kindly sorry for Travis. Make the I don't know twentieth <laughs> sprint down these halls. To, you, you, to, know, to you know, you know. I feel them. like I feel like we should have like um like a red like one of those red telephones where they call the Pentagon or something. Yeah. And be like right beside the desk. Yeah. Hey, at yeah, least the path honor. cleared, so he yep. get there quicker this time. True. Before you guys had to run all the way around. Oh, sorry. So now we see fire attack. Heater guardian. I believe so. He's gonna go all in, right? Yeah. Right. Otherwise, this. Thing doesn't doesn't make uh, any sense because he can still bonsai and defend yeah so let's see what he does okay so uh kasada kasada and hita guardian military fire conflict starting with uh starting with a strength of eight So that was a quick one. I think Shane just broke it. Gunner, no defense. He's going to decide to swing back instead. So lose, a, lose an honor for that. Oh, right. <laughs> what is he doing? Is it, oh, yeah. All sorts of crisis. Now, actually... Uh, so he's down, Gunner's down to six. Right. Uh, six honor? Yep. yep. So now, actually, um, Gunner, we saw two ancestral die shows in his hand. He's, he's only done a political conflict. Oh, oh, and the cloud of mine on the crisis and we knew breaker. It. We knew yeah, it. Yeah, because I think it still feels good to see, though. I'm sure. Well done on the cloud of mine. So now he does. Yeah, he does military, right? So this is gonna be interesting. But he, he can only send. He can send the other crisis breaker in, right? Here's the thing: if he if he does, um, the other crisis breaker is dishonored, so it only contribute to. Oh, well, they're both dishonored, so I guess they're both only contribute to. Are they both dishonored? I don't see a dishonor token on that. Oh, thing. maybe that's not one. It's yeah, like yeah. the art. Yeah. So, so may maybe it should have clouded so this is the military other. Military oh, three, three to three. He's going on the fact that this guy's going to disappear next round. Oh, sure. Yeah. I just thought maybe he could, between the two ancestral dice shows and the box, he could push through a victory. Okay, so one, two, three versus one, two, three. Here's the first dice show. Who is? So we're going 5-3? No. Or is that one not? It is not. So this is a Void Ring. It would help get rid of uh, Quesada. Yeah, turn. it's true. So what is uh, Shane's last province, anyways? Sorry, four, 4 for Shane now. Strength. Uh, meditation? You got to defend the wall. You got the Shameful display, and you got the Meditations on the tab. Isn't it like a meditation? Manicure Garden or yeah, Fertile Fields or something? Gar yeah, Manicure Garden. Yeah, it's garden. Manicure Garden. So not helpful. So that was a oh. looks like a bonsai. I think he played. So now he's at eight for Shane, and then there's a second dice show on Gun Gunner's side that makes the seven, I believe. For, yeah. Yep, Gunner. And he's gonna use his box. Yeah, box brings it up to nine. There you go. He's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rudo brings up an interesting point where he says still has talisman doesn't matter, and the mystic right. Right. 
Yeah. That's probably why he put the two fade on the Mystic. He's like, I, you can, you can try to wait out my Mystic, but <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet I can win the game before the Mystic goes away. Ham Hops is saying he saw a double talisman. I only counted one, but hey, yeah. we got a lot of things to pay attention to here. So maybe there is one. And that's it. All right. Into conflict, but no yeah. break. So voids Casada. You're right. Two yeah. two talismans there. Yeah. I see another way of the crab. Ooh, way of the crab. Oh. Yeah. So, oh, you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna let he's gonna let the Doom Shigenja die. And then he's I, gonna weigh the crab. I really feel like he's gonna weigh yeah. the crab. Heat a guardian. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that that would be the the correct play. Eh, actually, there I don't comes. know. Yeah, that's what Shazam. he's gonna do. There you go. Goodbye. Now you can play all the talismans you want. One mystic left in his in his, uh, in his pile. Yeah, but even with that Mystic, it's going to be pretty tough to, to yeah. break um, the Stronghold when you're not even allowed to attack it. True. Did you, did you already swap initiative, or is it going to swap now? Okay. All right, so initiative is now on Gunner's side. Um, discards a bunch of stuff, passes the initiative token. And uh, a Gasha Swordsmith oh. shows up oh. to Gasha Nishigant and a Mendicant. He's got enough for both. Yeah. The problem is that now, now Gunner's starting to run dry a little bit. He's got like uh, a bunch of small dudes, yeah, a bunch of weenies. Right yeah, and that. then now Shane's heroes are showing up. He's got Kaiyu Suichi, Dukum, Shurujisuki. That's that's yeah. That's, that's tough. But uh, bad timing on the Kasada because he just revealed another one. Now, I don't know if Yusuke is the right play, unless he has a rebuild in his hand. I guess, because yeah. it's not, not doing anything. I thought he could have could have won it on this turn, no? Three broken provinces, he just goes all in on the on the mountain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you. Uh, that's why Gunner is forced to play out as many people as possible, I think. Yeah. So, if Shane dupes here, I think it's likely that the Mendicant's going to get played. Yeah. Yep. So and then now Shane just passes. Get some money. Oh, he has a charge. That's why. Oh, That's charge smart. for Kassad. Yeah, because like, why wouldn't you bring up Kassad? Yeah. I got a charge. <laughs> yep. Charging in Kassad. Uh, so he's using the swordsman's ability at this point. Yep. Finds an ornate fan. I don't think it's going to be a political conflict, though. Although, sorry, uh, what is the... Policy debate? Oh yeah, sure. Two. Sorry. Um, it was. It wasn't. It didn't have it handy. It's the one thing we missed on his list. He does have two policy debates in his deck. Get a spyglass out on uh, Suichi. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have. Uh, oh, looks like Gunner realizes talisman is going to be a thing, so it's like, let's yeah. just get this out of the <laughs> way. I'm going to have to break this province eventually. I might as well know what it is and get this uh, get this resolved. Chain will use a charge now. That's Casada. Uh, yep. So, oh yeah, he's got the uh, favor, so Shane's winning the 7-4. to four. 
And we start to see... Uh, the oh, here comes the policy debate. Yeah. Right, that, that doesn't change the uh, battle. Now, has Casada's ability triggered yet? Uh, no, that, it just that's did. That's the cancel. So he just played the bonsai, so this triggers uh, Casada's ability. And then uh, he'll be free to do the policy debate. Oh, attaching a Daisho first. So that brings him up to six. Wonder why he chose to do that. Shane's like, what do I do? I pass. Alright, now he's up. Gunner uh, uses his stronghold to bring himself up to eight strength. Now Shane can't just pass. Well, I suppose he can. Policy debate, there you go. You don't need to shuffle, Shane. Just, it's a one man. So is it a talisman or is it a charge? Charge is gone, so... No, he had double charges. So oh, did he? His hand, oh, I think, right now is two uh, talismans and a charge. There you go, second charge is gone. So he's got two, there's two talismans left, is that right? Yep. Yeah. So that's, that was uh, Gunner's last policy debate. Uh, how many does Shane run? Two? two. Shane's only used one? Mm -hmm. So that was two, we've, two policy debate we've seen from uh, Gunner, and I believe only one from Shane. Those mill buffs were to win the conflict and allow his box to be um, utilized, therefore pumping up his uh, his military, excuse me, his political strength as well. That's why it was an auto one bit because there's no way Shane was going to win that. Um, and he gets rid of the charge because talismans don't matter at this point. Like with two in his hand, he's not getting rid of them. And then you're going to see the break come up right here. So that that was it. It was a pass. He brought in the. Um, the Tattooed Wanderer yep. through an Ancestral Daisho. So yeah. that, that's a break and it's done. That conflict is over. So back and forth swings between these two. Intra I mean, I've been entertained. It's an entertaining yeah. match. <sighs> so now those talismans are dead cards in his hand at this point. Yes, they are. Um, oh, so well, no. No, they're not dead. Uh, they're plus one, plus one. Ah. Bingo. Plus one, plus ones. Yeah. Uh, abilities are, are dead. Um, so it must. <laughs> I yeah. think it's something that Gunner had to get out of the way. So good, good on him. And he, I believe he disarmed the Suichi with, yeah, uh, with the fire ring. He's like, how many more of these do you, these guys do you have? Yeah. So. Both players got to review the other player's deck list at the beginning, so depending on their memory, they may know what they have less to face here. And because we're streaming, we want to make sure it's even playing field, so if someone happened to see a desk, de deck on the stream and knows a little bit about their point, we want to make sure both have the opportunity of knowing what those deck lists are. He's going to try ready as Casada. So he's declaring with uh, four right now, I believe? Yeah. No, sorry, he's dishonored. So that would bring him so down to one, two. one. Yeah. yeah, just two. Let me go see what's under the stronghold. What? Looks like Manica Garden. Oh, wow. So he's going for water to, to ready the Casada, but you know, right now in the chat, people, folks are like, "Yeah, you might want to go Earth for the for the double keepers again." I mean, I, I think it's a situation where you're okay either way. So either you win the water now, you get to ready Casada, or they commit enough that you're going to get the Earth in your second conflict. Yeah, and, and here it's not even just about hey, uh, winning it. If you don't defend at all, there could be a possibility of uh, you know. If you're not committing any defenders, you actually might, you might actually lose the game. So I think it might actually be a pretty decent move to take uh, to take water. So right now, Gunner's like, "Hey, do I defend and what? How, like, how much do I defend with?" Because right. Exactly. Like, so do can I risk not defending at all? Yeah. Uh, can and if I do choose to defend, do I want to actually win it? 
Well, he knows what's in his hand, right? So he, he knows all the cards to play here. He can just let it go and say, you know what? I'm not worried. Uh, I'm going to let you take this. You're ready. It's bad, but I'm okay with those consequences. He's probably doing the math at this point to see, hey, if Shane readies Kasada, uh, how, much, waiting. how much is uh, how much is he going to swing with? Because you know it could still be a break with military. So both players have been taking advantage of the extended clock we have in the finals here. Um, I can't blame them. What would you do here, Travis? Oh, I don't know. It's a tough call. I, I, we've been so busy with all the streaming stuff that I haven't played a game of L5R in probably a month. Oh, no. So, our game of anything, really. But, uh, yeah, once we're past Nationals, we'll probably have a, a bit more of an opportunity to get some games in. Going to definitely try to make it to a few... Uh, Battle for the Stronghold Kit events. Well, hey, thank you for all the hard work. Like, if anybody that's joining in now, Travis is the one that designed this interface here. Um, so, you know, a lot of it owed to him. So, good on you, and obviously, Victor, both yep. of you guys are just great on putting up this channel and supporting the, yep. the game. And uh, obviously, this is going to be the finals for L5R, but it doesn't mean that it's the end of streaming for us this weekend. Uh, we're covering uh, on our other channel, their main VTTV channel, as well as on YouTube, uh, the X-Wing, the, uh, the second flight this morning today. Okay, back to the match, because he's made a defender. Sorry, Victor. Victor tried to help me out just as the play got underway again. So, so it, it looks, looks like... like yeah. yeah. So go ahead. No, go. Looks like he's defended with the uh, Swordsmith and a uh, Kitsuki's method right out of the way. And what is he doing? Rebuild? Yeah. Now, is he going to take Karate District and discard that that fan, or is he going to he going to go for the safe move and take an Iron Mine? It's um, yeah. Let's see what he does. I mean, yeah, he could go for District to swing uh, to swing the strength. I mean, there's, there's a real argument here. If, if he can win this after having him commit a character, there is a chance that he could come back with Kasada and take this. Good point. Rebuild apparently can't be used on uh, unbroken provinces, and maybe that's oh, yeah, why right. they're all back. broken. Right? Yeah, we saw him play it, and uh, he put it back in his hand. So yeah. there's nothing Shane can do there. He's gonna lose that conflict. So that was the last conflict. No ready in Casada. Now the same math goes back the other way, saying, "I'm gonna commit. What do I need to defend with?" I'm kind of a bit surprised that he didn't throw uh, the Shrewd Yasuki into that last combat so he could get a card and maybe have a few more options for the rest of the round. There's no um, holdings in play, so that card oh, effect never mind. Yeah, You're right. Thank play. you. He's going to defend with it instead. Yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, this is this is not a good scenario because even with the pumps, it's going to be 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> so... Uh, he's like, yeah, I see that math too. Maybe I'll hold off. But what are you going to do with them otherwise, right? Yeah, go all in. Because this is the final conflict for um, for Gunner. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to really... I mean, maybe you get it wearing... Well, now he's like, oh, but there's Earth there. <laughs> if I could maybe win an Earth conflict and get my keepers in, that would be great. This is a bit of a risk. So there we go. I think that's final. Hopefully. Um, Two yeah, strength. No. Yeah. There you go. That's confirmed. So, yeah, I can't imagine what Gunner might have to bump his strength enough to break. So it's going to honor him. So he's actually at four because he has to actually the, the Imperial favor there. No, that's military. Oh, yes. Sorry, political attack. I, I did, the only reason I know is because I tried to tell Victor the same thing two seconds ago. Yeah. Oh, nice. And All right, so we, we are the seeing talisman. the talisman for the, the plus one. Hey, nope. Not using the stronghold, though. Interesting. Now he uses it. And that's four. Takes him up to four. Uh, Gunner's like, I need my guy to die so I can get the Kitsuki method back. 
So he's, Shane's going to win the battle, which that basically means that the Crisis Breaker isn't going to be gone at the end of the round. Because that's what the Void would have taken the uh, fate off of uh, the Crisis Breaker to take one more body off for next round. And here he comes, going for the Earth Ring, military. Nothing to lose. And but he does have what he needs. So that puts him at four against uh, Shane's two? Four to two. It's worth a try. So, I mean, at least now, all of Gunner's attachments are on characters and they're committed, right? So Does he even have any more cards in his hand? He does not. <laughs> so Shane has one talisman. Gunner has no cards. So the one advantage now is those uh, attachments are all spread out. Okay, we got one of the dice shows coming back. The attachments are a bit spread out, so Shane has the option of getting a mix of commits that might let him get through, and uh, Gunner can't do as much reacting. Gunner also is in the position, like, I mean, how aggressive do you draw when you're at five honor? I mean, Shane needs cards desperately as well, but... You Shane, mean, Shane's got the spyglass to help him. Yeah. And Suichi. See the third keeper here and uh, two uh, steadfast witch hunters. Oh, oh this is wow. a great flop for um, for Shane. And I mean, after all of that money for so long, Gunner doesn't have what he would like to be able to spend on that board now. So you see the first witch hunter. I think Shane is saying, you know what? This is this is going to be the round. He's going all in on this. We're just going to buy it. We're not we're not going to throw the random extra two fate on the witch hunter <laughs> for no reason, like he did at the end of last game. Yeah, he's going all out. He's got initiative. Um, yeah, I don't see a way out. Yeah, because so Ham Hops is saying the dragon has this. I'm not sure. I 100 percent agree, but I, I definitely see that it could go both ways here. Weapon Taco said earlier, should have bid five, or I'd bid five. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. A lot of uh, fate on the defender. It's not two witch hunters, so. This is interesting. He's not going all in. That's um, all right. Can't see that bit, but based off the lack of honor exchange, I gotta assume it's a three-three. Yeah, it looks like a three-three. So yeah, I mean, certainly right now, if you're looking at the board, Sumiko's going to get to hit twice, but you also got to keep in mind, like some of the viewers or commentators are mentioning, Witch Hunter almost gives Shane that same sort of ability. Um, obviously, he has less attractive right, targets. Looks, like looks like it was 5e. E. Oh, no, he was. Sorry, he was, that was his one. No, he's running... I got he's, you. Yeah, he's running that, um, the ability to look for another weapon, so there you go. Yeah, I gotta agree, Weapon Taco, and uh, that's what's going on. There's no harm in going almost all in at this point. And, um, winning that Earth Ring and then bringing back three keepers. Um, yeah. Not a bad scenario to be in. So I'm curious what the players have. We know Shane had the talisman from last round. I don't know what else he drew. I think I saw court games. Yeah, uh, court games I know was one. Gonna draw with a spyglass. Uh, don't know what he's doing, don't know where he's going. Well, sorry, we do know where he's going. He's going to the stronghold. Uh, and it looks like it's a military earth. Military earth, and he's going in with one, two, three. Three strength. Uh, no. Oh yeah, three. He's calling four. I'm missing something. 
Oh, the uh, the mount? Is that a mount? No, there's... What? I don't think the spyglass gives a benefit to your military. Uh, maybe they didn't declare military? Uh, it's military error. I see that right there, so... This is interesting. Yeah. He's not going for the Earth Ring. And I'm pretty sure the math is wrong. It should be three. But we'll, we'll correct them if they, if they get it wrong. We don't. You know, his opponent is making decisions on... So Travis is going to go over there and inform them just so that the decision making is, uh, is proper, I guess. And here comes an assassinate. That's what you can do when you have a ton of honor on you. So, so Joe's asking why two fade. I, you know, I don't know either. I, I was, I, I thought he was gonna go all in, but I'm sure there's a method to the madness, and there's a reason for it. So he now knows it's three. Um, we're gonna look at what he has. So he's bringing in the skirmisher, which will add another one. He must have drawn that um, with Suichi. Yeah. Shane, Shane had missed. He forgot uh, that both were dishonored. So he must have drawn that with Suichi because uh, there'd be no reason not to play the skirmisher first. Um, so a little bit of a desperation move. And the box is going to be used. Bringing it up by one more point for, for Gunner. So Crisis Breaker comes in uh, because he has less and brings him up to another two. And it looks like another one from the uh, Talisman. So that brings him up to a solo seven. Crisis Breaker was always there, right? Um, no, I don't. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, he was. So I think it's just the one from the uh, talisman. Yeah, that... Sorry about that, guys. I'm getting fatigued. I'm just commentating. Yeah. Well, this match has been a lot of. Uh... So it's five five. They're both counting too. They're tired too. They're counting up their numbers. Oh, and there you go. The Spine Katana that we saw him draw, that brings him up to seven, successfully defending so far. I think Shane just passed, yeah. So that's a win for Gunner. Yeah. Maybe a reason why he went for air, because he, he, he didn't expect to win that conflict. Well, I, I think he needed the faith. Yeah. Like, as so. someone said on chat, I think it was, that was about getting some of the faith. Oh, is that right? How, how much faith did he pick up? Uh, two, I believe. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Gotcha. Or, or yeah, even more. Uh, Joe, Joe mentioned that, so... Hey, thanks for pointing that out. So, doesn't hesitate... Uh, oh, Mountain doesn't have fall? Did he play Mountain doesn't have fall? Is that... No, I think he's sacked, right? Yeah. Okay, he... Oh, yes, right, yes. He sacked the skirmisher to ready him. Ready to So, the Witch Hunter's used. Sumiko, obviously, no harm in attacking. He's got the favor. So I can't see what's in his hand either. I think somebody else noted um, Shane likes to play with his cards upside down. Doesn't matter how it looks, he knows what card it is. So, so military void against his stronghold. Hammertron here confirms, yeah, it was the skirmisher that got sacked. So thank you for that. So it's going to be Sumiko versus... It's a military void, so they're gonna go. It's gonna double block with. Uh, He's got the borderlands, borderlands defender, and the step back. And the, yeah. Yeah. So oh yeah, there's a map. Brings him up to seven. Oh, yeah, right. Sorry, I thought they was reversed for some reason. Seven. Oh, I yeah. The overlay software is not perfect. Sometimes the last plus you hit doesn't show up on the overlay. <laughs> Mountain doesn't have fall. There you go. All right. So she's not bowing? She's not bowing. And she's going to sit there to defend for the second attack from Sumiko.
So, I don't know how many... Five. Uh, we missed no, that. I know. Five uh, to seven. Oh, no, I clicked it. Just the, it's just broken. Damn. Um, so, yeah. We we're going to say we knew we had the dice show from last turn. So, and there you see it. There you see yeah, the... And he has a stronghold. Box. Bring him to nine total. So, assuming Shane wins this, I guess he can swing again with Suichi and covert um, the Gash of Swordsmith and commit Smeko so that she can't do it. Oh, we see a Banzai. We're going to see if he's going to double fire or just single. He does not choose to use the uh, second fire because he only needs to get up to nine. So he gets up to nine, wins the conflict, also takes uh, the fate off of Suichi. Yeah, well done. And there you go. He's going to covert the swordsmith, forcing Sumiko to defend or not defend at all and lose. Um, and this way, you prevent Smeeko from swinging twice. So, nice move. Yep, he's going to remember to bow the steadfast uh, Witch Hunter. Court games. Bringing him up yeah, so to... Yeah, so got a political? Five. Yeah. So we got five strength. Five to four right now, yep. Note the gunner, it has already used a stronghold, so there's not, nothing you can do. Just uh, remembering that he hasn't taken his manicured fate. So I don't think Shane is going to... Oh, that's a ooh, big pull. So show. gets rid of one of those dice shows. So Shane returning the favor there um, and saying, hey, go ahead, take the fate that you forgot. Not quite the same as letting in uh, two keepers from before, but certainly still a, a sign of sportsmanship in him. You know, his other keeper is right there. I'm not sure why he doesn't see it. So if he doesn't bring it in, that might be a big mistake on his part. So it looks like he's going to forget it. And it's sitting right in front of him, too. Yeah. So The second one he left on the board this game, right? Yeah, I'd be hard-pressed to think Gunner's going to let him do it again. Um, but when he Shane watches this later, he's going to be like, ah, oh, darn. No, but he... he this time... Uh, oh. So, as a judge, one of the things is, if the, ta if the players resolve it at the table, you don't really want to get involved. Like, that's the best solution. That's the best situation if the players agree on a course of action. When you're dealing with the final table, however... It, I don't know. I, I find it's a bit of a gray area. You want the game to be as clean as possible, but I mean, even even in the rules documents, they state for the judges, if the players can resolve it, that's the best scenario. If the judge doesn't have to get involved. Hey, and I have to agree. I mean, like you, you, everybody watching, everybody playing, just wants the best player to win. And you know, if there's anything that you can do to, to, to assist in that, then you should help. So. Um, yeah, uh, so weapon, I know Shane, he knows it triggers, uh, so he didn't forget, he just missed it. Uh, Dovo, he says, player's responsibility to remember. I'm not talking about him forgetting his triggers, I'm talking about the situation earlier in the match where Shane missed his triggers, the round advanced a little bit, and, and Shane's like, oh, I forgot to bring my keepers in after winning an Earth Conflict. And Gunner was generous in allowing him to still do so, even though there had been, uh, it was after the window. Is he out of uh, Dynasty characters now? Is that right? He's out of Dynasty cards, yes. Oh, wow. So he does not want to bid very many cards, I don't think. Yeah, this is Just a, in case he... <laughs> this is a reverse. I mean, I don't know if they're going past this round. Yeah, right. Oh, no, he has to. He... Sorry, I, I haven't gotten to this situation right now. Does he need to now shuffle his deck so he can refill? Yeah, he does. Yeah, so he's losing his five honor. 
He He's taking it off right now. He knows. Yeah. So he has six. He loses five. He's down to one honor. Wow. Living on the edge. And uh, Gunner's got first initiative, so. Wow. So Shane can't lose a conflict here. Well, can't lose his first conflict. Even, even by a single point. No. So the Witch Hunters are not an advantage because multiple conflicts. It's going to be all about this, this first conflict. Shane's in a tough spot. Yeah, we see Gunnar bringing in the, um, the Kitsuki Investigator. He's a great card. Let's you take a peek at your opponent's hand. He's, like a, he's a policy debate built in. And he doesn't even need to debate you. <laughs> he just tells you to show him. Yeah. Shane recognizing he's going to need to all end defend here. I mean, he doesn't care because he's got the Witcher. So if he can successfully defend. 1-1, one, one, both for both of them, not surprising. Looks like he picked up in other court games. That yep. might be very, very impactful. Especially with the immediate sack of uh, yeah. Steadfast Witch Hunter. Now, no, Shane is going to be able to defend with a lot of characters here, which means he's going to get a big bonus off his stronghold. So, <laughs> Yep, someone uh, does also raise a good point here. Um, he could uh, use the Witch Hunter to... Uh, Immediately sack. Sack something that has a, that's an honored character. But that's only if this is a political debate. Yep. Or a political, sorry, political, political conflict. So these guys are going to go right down to the wire here. This is going to be an important one. So looks like uh, Gunner's oh! going to oh! Jesus! Okay. That's an X-Wing celebration that you guys just heard over the mic. Um, is he going all in? He moved them all up. Does he go all in for the air? I think he's going all in with the air. I was super excited because I thought we were going to see our first ride in the streets play. Mm. And then there wasn't enough room. All right. So he's going all in. Is this political? Uh, yes. Political error. He left out Midikant. Thank you. Weapon tackle. Oh, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Weapon tackle. I mean, as Shane, I mean, Shane already always, he does have an emergency out where this is not a lose, loss. Because we know he has the court games in hand. So he could, he could uh, honor someone and sacrifice it with the witch hunter. I mean, that's not ideally what he wants to do. So this is a political battle. Uh, There's a toughie. So if Shane can weather this storm, got Shane, uh, he's got the initi he's got the board control for, for next round. Keep in mind, um, Gunner's actually got a like favorable. So does twelve twelve. So. Gunner can actually bring in the medicant if he wants, and that's the reason why he likely left it out. Um, or pull a guy back. Uh, and remember, Sumiko's gonna, well, Sumiko can't hit twice because no more favor, but you can always pull her back out. So let's, let's see what happens here. I see a fan on the defender. So that brings it up another two points. Shane and has to decide what card that he likes the least. Yeah. Ooh, I would, uh, I would have court, court games. games. I would have court games yeah. first just so you had the out. That was Kitsuki Investigator probably. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I would have court, I would have used court games on uh, a keeper. I gotta agree. Yeah. Uh, the, you give yourself that out, but I mean, he may not even realize he he that he has that play. He thinks he can win it, though. That's that's the thing. So, whether you do or you don't, uh, uh, I don't know. Look, he's gonna self honor the Togashi initiate. I mean, I'm sure he and forgot. Here comes the box. I'm sure he wasn't One, two, thinking three, of the investigator. Four, five, six, six. Hard pressed to see. Um, that's a, take that's this. a big yeah. thing. So I think we're gonna see uh, Samiko maybe take a take a rest. Uh, favorable grounds back out of this fight. 
So here's the interesting part. You know, you just mentioned that he didn't play the court games and now it's chucked, right? He, he took it? He chose it? Did Gunnar choose the court games at the he start? Did. He did. So going to assassinate on their shoot Masuki, so. So now we're going to be interesting. That's three scenario. down. Because if Shane doesn't attack with that Kai, Kai Yu envoy, Gunnar's going to win a firing and just dishonor one, one of Shane's guys, and that'd be game. So, yeah. Well, but Shane, yep. Shane just does a fire conflict. He, if, if Shane doesn't go for the fire conflict. Yeah, I, mean, I think he does here because he just... Well, hold on. If he does go for the fire conflict, then... Uh, oh, yeah, he can sacrifice the guy to ready, ready step past which ones are right. Oh, he has an... Is it Mendicant in the conflict? Yeah, so he plays a katana on... Uh, no, he's not. Plays a katana so he can get the trigger. So that's another two strength off the stronghold. And, and that's the game. three for Kazooie. So two more strength to bring him to 16 with three would be 19. And that would be that be game. He was actually at 18, I believe, with the, with the, with the favor, 19 oh. to 18. That was a toughie. Yeah. yeah. And that is it. Gunner.